obviously do the bill for public comments. No, oh, I'm happy to move the agenda. Um, just one thing. Uh, act, should we add Shane uh, Tweeton's email to the action items? I don't know if we've actually finished with that yet. Sure. <clears throat> and I'm going to ask for everyone's help to make sure that we absolutely put the recommendation for the transportation work plan through. <laughs> we got that one last night. Okay, so that's good. So, David, you want to yeah, move, move the agenda in a second? Oh, okay. Wendy, sure. That on paper, Hello. I do apologize for being late. I had enormous trouble with my printers. All three of them. All three of them. Okay, we will be with you in a moment. I guess so. Now let's go to the minutes from our last meeting. Has everybody had a chance to look over it? And does anybody need anything? Slides. You have to go to the next one or the oh, last one. Yeah, that's no problem. Do you want me to operate it? Or? Um, could you hand those out to everybody, please? Factor 
in the livability of Snug Cove Village. Because at the moment, and um, for many years, the, the ferry has been um, set in the village, and it tends to disrupt the place every hour on the hour, or they've changed that now, it varies a bit. Um, and I will remind you that uh, the, if you go to Gibson's, the ferry marshalling used to be in Gibson's, and they finally got rid of the ferry marshalling and put it out to, to Langdale, and the, um, the businesses said, oh, well, that, that's the end of businesses, uh, they're never going to come into the Gibson's now, and in fact, that was not true, and it worked there. I'm not proposing to move the ferry um, 10 miles away. Um, I'm just suggesting that we move the ferry over to the south side of the cove. And the, there are various reasons for this. Um, first of all, the context. should be a place to shop and enjoy a pedestrian orientation and it should be a safe place for kids to run around not be a place where you're continually having to worry about cars coming racing for the last ferry um, how can we have a pedestrian oriented cove which is also a ferry marshalling yard um, I've already mentioned the fact that part of the context is the economic activity so what are the goals well at the time that I started this, um, or got really involved in this, which was 20 years ago, um, one of the goals was to facilitate Snug Cove revitalization, and I've already said something about that. Um, a more important one is perhaps to improve the ferry marshalling. Um, now, there are people like um, Daniel Heald, who runs the Ruddy Potato, who says, well, we shouldn't be using cars. Well, I'm sorry. Hopefully we'll have electric cars and, and renewable energy to power them, but I cannot see cars going away for a very long time. Um, they may be electric, they may be autonomous, but they're still going to need to use the ferry. Because people want, if people live on burn, they're going to have to go elsewhere. And if people are elsewhere and they have to do something on burn, they've got to come to burn. And that includes tourists who spend a lot of money here. So, another goal is to enhance tourism, and then another goal is to invigorate the, invigorate the businesses, because they depend on tourism and they depend on the locals. And if you suddenly find there are not locals, um, you, thank you, um, you just simply won't have um, that many people to, to attend the businesses. And also, we have to have trade people come on and off the island in order to, to do things that only trade people can do. So there's a lot of, there's a number of goals that require us to do better with the ferry. Um, and the sort of head, head items are to make Snug Cove a more livable place and to make the ferry something which I will explain as we go along. Okay, so. This is an overview, an aerial view of the, of the village, and that sort of greyish sausage uh, towards the bottom of the picture, stretching up towards the top right corner, is the area that would be occupied by the ferry marshalling. And you'll see that it's well clear of the boat grounds, um, 
it leaves trees in, 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 in places which are going to ma maintain a, a reasonable view. It doesn't interfere with the um, marina and it exits on Dorman Road. Um, I'll go a little bit closer. And um, this, the colours don't show up too well. But these are actually circles um, which show how far from the centre of the village, which I'm taking as being the snug cafe, um, the, the red line which passes just below. Um, uh, well, how, how best to identify it? There's a red line that's, that's a 400. Here, I can, I can pass a copy of this round so you can have a look at it. Yeah, that's okay, I've got one actually. Thank you. I think yours is better. Thank you. So, there's a, a red circle which goes roughly in that direction. That's 400 yards, or 400 steps if you like. And you'll see that most of the main items in the village are in fact within that 400 yards. It's comparable to the distance from Horseshoe Bay Village to the Bowen area marshalling in the Horseshoe Bay Terminal. Um, the access from the ferry marshalling to the village would be over the broad walk, which goes up this area here uh, and comes directly onto Doc Morgan's, in fact. Um, which I'll, I'll mention later, provides a very nice entry to the village. So, um, I'll go back again. You'll see this, this sort of bulge here. That's where all the action takes place. And then there is simply a road which goes off to the ferry terminal, the, the actual dock. And that dock may have to be moved a little further out. Um, it's a, that's a matter of the seabed, and I don't have good readings on the seabed. But that's a normal dock, just like the one we've got, except hopefully they'd make it um, uh, earthquake-proof. Because the current dock, as far as I know, is not earthquake-proof. So, um, you'll see that when you, that you've got, um, you've got two marshalling lanes coming in like this, and they will take far more cars than we've got at the moment. And then, there are, there's access to a turnaround area, which goes along there. Um, you can also get parallel parking here, and there's some parking here where people who just want to leave their cars at the terminal and walk to the village can do so. And then finally, there are these two outlet lines, lanes, and they go on to Drawman Road, and, and this shows how they, they narrow down um, So that's the actual entrance on Dorman Road, which would lie between the entrance to Bowfest grounds and the entrance to the sewage works. Now I'll just make a comment about that whole area. Um, whoops, I went far too far, sorry. Um, the, the, that area where the red sausage is. First of all, there's a sewage works here. And that area there, I've walked in. It's, it's got derelict cottage foundations. It's got rotting tree stumps. It, it's, it's, really, it's, it's supposedly part of Crippen Park, but it's not, it's not a, a very park-like place. Most people who go to this side of the, for, for park-like things walk up to the top of Dorman Point here. Um, in fact, the south part of Crippen Park, when they first set up Crippen Park, um, it was agreed that the municipality could use um, Crippen Park or, or that land for whatever, or the island, I don't think the municipality existed at the time, could use that portion of ground for whatever purpose that they saw, and they could take it out of Crippen Park in order to do that. Um, that failed, that um, lapsed about 20 years ago. It was, it was just for 10 years. So I think that it would not be too much trouble to resurrect that uh, concession and, 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 and get that land for municipal purposes, maybe even lease it to BC Ferries 
in order to collect rent on it. But I don't know about that. That's beyond my um, orbit. David? Um, we have, have a couple, only a couple minutes left in the time. A couple of minutes? Yeah. Okay. Um, that shows the, the ferry marshalling coming down into Sonic Cove. You'll see that it's well clear of, you can get seaplanes going in here quite easily. Um, and the big advantage of this is there's no dog leg. It's further out towards Queen Charlotte Channel uh, than the existing uh, ferry terminal. And it's, it's got a dog leg. Um, the, the, the original had a dog leg. And took, and I've talked to Mark Collins about that. In fact, let's rush on to that one because that's really important. Um, I, these are just excerpts from uh, com correspondence I had with um, Mark Collins, who was a VP Engineering when I first started this, and he's now CEO. He's actually in favor of the Southside Terminal. He says it would be operationally more convenient and BC Ferries would cover the cost um, initially and would recover the, the cost over a, a long period. And it turns out, when I estimated this back in 2012, this would be about 50 cents a passenger um, and a dollar fifty per car. And then I'll just go on finally. Um, that was the Prairie Merlin. Okay. This is the current entrance to the to, Bowen Island. Um, this is the entrance that you get if you put the ferry on the south side. Um, I've given you a list of the advantages. I'm, I, I suggest if you want to read through them at some stage and get back to me if you've got questions, that'll be fine. Mm -hmm. I know there's lots of documentation here for sure. It would be nice to get a maybe. Um, did you, I'm, I'm dead, I'm sorry. sorry. Did you did you share that? You shared that with staff, right? The I PowerPoint. Have, I shared this with the whole council back in 2012. But I mean, for for right now, does staff have that this presentation? They've or is it just the on the thing? Yes. Okay. Because that has some good information on it yeah. as well. Perfect. Well, un unfortunately, we're, we, we are pretty pressed with, for time in this meeting. And so um, I think we're going to go through, we can look at the information and then we'll discuss as a committee, not necessarily today. But does anybody have any questions right now? Thanks. For David? Can I make one further comment? Mm -hmm. Trying to put the ferry marshalling in what is supposed to be an attractive pedestrian-oriented village is rather like trying to design a house in which the kitchen and the family room are the same place. Right. Or maybe the bathroom and the family room. The bathroom, <laughs> the bathroom and the kitchen. Um, one question. Okay. What was the cost estimate that went along with that uh, recovery at uh, you just, cost of recovery per ticket that you just gave us, the dollar fifty well, and that was based on an estimate of 25 million. Yeah. But in point of fact, they put a wonderful ferry terminal up at Swindle Island for, th I think, 500 people. Um, it's got wonderful carvings, a totem pole, a, an entrance. Um, the final cost of that, which was done a, a while back, was 17.6 million. And that 25 million, that's 2012? Numbers? That 25 million was an estimate in 2012, but the comparable um, terminal up at Swindle Island for the um, for the for the truck for the band up there um, only cost 17.6 million. They'd originally estimated that at 25 million. Okay. <coughs> okay. Thank right. you. Any any other questions? Anybody? Uh, real real quick. Uh, I'm on the phone, he's so I don't have visual in front of me. Uh, but thank you for the presentation. Um, and for my my mental visual mind, when we say south side, uh, John, are you saying on the other side of Crippen Park, just like around that point in Dorman Bay? Uh, on the other side of the marina. South of Bowfest the... Field. By the field. Yeah, south, just... south of Bowfest Field. 
Okay, but not on the other side in Storm and Bay. No, no, no. Still in, oh, still in Sun Cove, but. Yes, that's right. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Appreciate that. Awesome. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you all for yes. listening to me. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you for putting all this work. Thank you very much. I'm glad you had that. I'm not sure how to get a green one now. <laughs> Because council wrote a letter saying we don't want that little thing again, and um, the letter was that most the most probable ferry would be the Queen of Cumberland. Um, I mean that's basically the same size. Right. It has and what was the size? Size, something sky. Yeah, I know. I assumed they would use that bigger. one. I think the sky is a the sky is a little bit bigger. The sky is a little bit bigger. It is. Well, where was that reported? Yes. Um, I'd seen that reported earlier. I think no, Melanie. But, yeah, Melanie. Around the sky. sky. That, that was yeah. from a. Yeah. Two BIMTAC address <coughs> meetings, yeah. um, and then a, and then a letter from Darren, um, specifically saying it was the Malaspinas guy. I think the purpose of this action item is just to make sure that if something like this happens again, we're not then going, yeah. oh, it's already happening, and now we're scrambling trying to yeah. figure it out. Yeah. So, anyways. So it needs to come off this list. I think it needs to come off this list, but everybody, I think members. everybody knows that if you ever heard of something like that, you would probably say something like it. So, um, okay, number five. Committee members look into what other small islands do we ferry marshalling. I totally did not. Well, I mean, most of them 
they actually have BT Ferries has a bunch of land and they yeah. all you know gonna line up. Yeah, Gabriel is very different. You know, it's, yeah, it's it you don't it's the same thing. You don't come into the cove. You come into like an area of nothing, and then you drive into the cove, or they're you know so they're they're the downtown kind of thing. Main so. like that. Yeah. yeah. So I think we are a bit unique in that we went out right into like, the hub. Yeah. Um, should we take? Should we talk about that more, or is that? I think we all kind of have an understanding of what other people have. And it doesn't really. I mean, the ferry marshalling is, you know, for the time I've been on the island, it's been an issue. Um, it will, I think it'll be an issue when I die. Uh, <laughs> it's you know running through. I mean, David's Wouldn't right. Wouldn't it be cheaper just to move the cove? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're here. Yeah, so we're 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 David's running, rebuild the building. Know, running, running the, through the middle of the No, I mean, it's not it a great is. Idea. But that there it's are at the same, yeah. There are all kinds of different alternatives have been pro uh, uh, proposed over years and years and years. And, and I, I so, but don't but see BC Ferries coming to us with $25 million to nope. spend on moving the ferry terminal. So. No, nope. and there's another development I can't tell you about that would make that impossible. Uh, okay. It would make it the south side. Just would, would not happen. Okay. Uh, we'll learn about. I'll be able to explain it soon. Uh, number six, next meeting, discuss ferry marshaling in busy tourist oh. season. So that will come up later on. Mm -hmm. But we also on the next page you'll see there's just oh, to the last draw your one. Attention. Family day weekend. Let's just for the show. The what? The Labor Day. Family day. Oh, family day. Yeah. It was like a four sailing weekend. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. So we'll discuss that one. We do discuss that later. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll discuss that one later coming up. Okay, so from the November 27 meeting, uh, Tyler reach out to wheelchair user groups with illustrations, post feedback on proposed connections and report back to committee by email. Then but more follow up where? Still the same. Okay. Uh, Emma Chow. Approach First Transit regarding free rides to the commuter parking for handicapped or mobility impaired commuters. Um, I have not followed up. Okay. So leave it on there to be done. Uh, Councillor Hawking, contact staff regarding installing handrails, bar, or railings on Bowen buses so riders will be permitted to stand and capacity is increased. So but that's the four. There's four yeah, people. now I, I think Emma and I talked about this. And, and I actually, when I was riding the bus and I had to look, there are bars. There's bars yeah. on the top. And I think, so, uh, yeah, I think there's. But then they said they, they will allow standees, but four. Is that yeah. what it is? Yeah. For some reason. We have no idea why. I think it's on you now. Yeah, yeah and, I, and we're discussing that a bit and later on as well. Because the correspondent wasn't satisfied with that. No, no, it was just more I was following. It was me. Uh, number four, Tyler Davenport, follow up with Jason regarding receiver signal for a light at top where visibility gets lost. You talked about this uh, recently and I think that without BC Ferries willing to contribute funding for it and it being kind of a nice to have, it's probably uh, dead in the water. Okay. BC Ferries is willing to support right. it by uh, tying into their... But they want yeah, they're yeah. not putting any money into anything that's not on their property. Um, and then the Shane Tweeten one, I'm just kind of added that at the bottom. So that was the email where he was talking about purchasing car, like vehicle ferry passes or tickets on the ferry and then not having to go all the way out to Caulfield, turn around and come back, but being able to somehow in the terminal turn around. So this was something where the short answer was, no, you can't do that. But then, the, do, is that something we want to ask? I mean, is there some way that we can explore that a little further? It, it, it had been explored years ago when they first, you know, re jigged the terminal the way it is now. Um, because you, there used to be a, I'm trying to remember exactly, there used to be a closer place to turn around. I think you could turn around just outside the terminal, I forget. But anyway, um, no. Because there's issues about where would they, how would the person, with safety issues, and how would the person merge with the cars that are already there, and those and kinds of things. They need to have a like a marshaller at yeah. that gap where they yeah. can turn around. And they have to know how many cars have purchased it. Yeah. Exactly. So, just 
statistically it every time. Exactly. And I just didn't know if that was something that that you said it has been. It has, it has been, been discussed, I mean, so it's. When was it discussed? Do oh, I don't remember years ago. Um, I mean, the other other issues that have been discussed is buying passenger tickets for the other ferries, so you can walk across. Well, I know that. Yeah, they, they, can do that. that. they can do they, that. They did do that. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know if maybe that was something that wanted to be. It would be a, a FA, FAC back? could bring it up, but I, I I think it's way too complicated. It's way yeah. too complicated. But we asked PC Ferries for us to be easily yeah. Yeah. doable, yeah. and I think to have a little. Like, let's say I was the person I happened to be right in the middle of the Queen of Capilano. What are they going to do? Give me a sticker or a little thing to put on my dash? I yeah. need to interrupt the other two flows of lane to kind of pull over. And what if there's three sure miles no on the line or line You literally on the line. Need, yeah. you need several more marshals yeah. to get you to the yeah. right spot. And and they find that one, the paper lady on the 620 boat always did the U-turn around, but I think it was just their yeah. deal with the paper. Yeah. Twice a year we go over to Tofino. And we just take the 620 and we're back on the 830 and yeah. it's just part of your morning. You yeah. just have yeah. to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I would think that BC ferries would require a lot of traffic to justify yeah. changing the infrastructure to yeah. accommodate yes. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. also the terminal's undergoing the redevelopment right. plans right now. So yeah. they're in their, um, they've done the engagement for conception, conce concepts. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they should be coming back out this fall, I believe, as they're scheduled with some options. And part of the feedback has definitely been that whole like turnaround and call field thing, like how can we address that? So hopefully. Oh, so maybe it might be. They, I think I remember in sketches that I've seen that there was some sort of a turnaround. Right. Yeah. And, and it's not just coming off the ferry either, it's coming back from Western Squamish and the Sea to Sky, right? Where you mm -hmm. end up kind of going yeah, all the way up, all the way back. back. I personally do it very often. I don't find it a big deal. It's an extra yeah. five minutes. You just account for that when you leave. But if there was something, I, it made a lot of sense in the ferry consultations to have the ticketing, particularly for pedestrians, but a lot closer to your actual destination. Mm -hmm. right? so, but if, but the the cars, it makes sense to have it as well as quite far away, so you can actually marshal those people and actually have room for several sailings going down the nine and so forth. Yeah. So they have uh, I don't think this is an issue we really. No, and I, I just I just was curious how they respond to him basically I've instead of saying you know two thousand. So, okay. So so really yes. yes. We did, I did it. We did it. Coming back from Sunshine Coast. And we were going to miss the 10. And there were about six cars. And they just, we just waved at them and they just put us through. Well, I'm sure that there's from like a Sunshine special, Coast. maybe. Yeah. It was so we were going to miss the last boat on ferry. But maybe having a policy. Oh, was it was the last boat on ferry? So yeah. Yeah. Really they've, said they, they, they've, they've said they would no do. Traffic. There was no traffic. There was no traffic. Yeah. They've said they will do stuff yeah. like that yeah. for the last sailing. Yeah. Right. Okay. So they, they will help you out there. Yeah, that's more for, I'll, I'll give you these notes. Then. Okay. Uh, next, we are going on to, what are we doing? Are we doing? Updates. Hey. Emma. Thank you. I'm going to make this snappy. Um, my report was a little late, sorry. I think we got sent out. Um, you know, it's not for everyone to look at it. Was it? Maybe? No? <coughs> I emailed it to you and oh, it came to me. I left the office. That's oh. okay. So no problem. I don't know, it was yesterday. Yeah. Doctors. Yesterday, sorry. sorry. Um, there's not a whole lot, so that's fine. You're not missing a lot. Um, the 2020 budget approvals have yet to happen. It will probably be another month out. Um, and the work plan hasn't actually officially been approved, so nothing is really moving forward on the 2020 work plan. But I will report on the leftover items from the 2019 work plan, and that was the electric vehicle charging station in public works hands right now. And you know, with the staff changes and the new director of engineering, um, I, I'm not sure how high up it is on his radar. I've mentioned it a couple times that I, I it's not being installed now. Oh, it is. It is. I, I, he just hasn't okay. set any time. For it, so. But it's expected um, to take less than a week. I see. It's easy. It's the, the main thing is having BC Hydro um, uh, making sure that the service connection is the right capacity. Um, so I'll let you guys know as soon as I know. And I'll just keep coordinating with Public Works. Um, and then um, 
Oh, the cycling banner. I, I brought it. This oh. Ah. Um, it's pretty cool. I should have set this up earlier, but I forgot. Um, so I figured this is the main thing um, that we should talk about. Uh, where you guys would like this. It's pretty big. And this gets, oh, it's an actual banner. So it's that size, it'll be go right onto the road? That's it. So people drive yeah. over it? So well, that's the meter. This should be where the car is, so they will drive over it. Really? Hopefully not. That's over actually it. pretty cool because it's yeah. definitely life size. There's no yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mentioned it to be on the ground to be really life size. And is that a meter? Yeah, this is a, that's a meter. meter. Wow, amazing. With, yeah. So it's it's pretty big, but when you get on the roadway it's not. And how, how is that, I mean, I, I don't know if it matters, I'm just curious, how is that attached to the How is it attached to the yeah. For sure. That would be the first time, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it would make it, it would make a big deal. Get yeah. Take you in the undercurrent and yeah, all that no, sort of stuff. Really and, 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 yeah. yeah. No, it's that's. Uh, I don't know why I'm surprised that it's life size because that makes total sense that yeah. it's life size. Yeah. But it's like that's so big. It's life size. It's May, May 25th to 29th. Okay. That's what it says. Bike to school week. I don't know if that means bike to school and work week. Yeah, usually it's the same. Yeah, Hubs just calls it bike to school week. Oh, that'd be great. Okay. Super. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also got the, the safety signs for, for cycling, the ones that said uh, do not pass cyclists or something like that, with the, the share the road signs. Um, so those haven't ordered and I was told they were shipped. I haven't seen them. So I've also asked Public Works because they probably got shipped to Public Works. Um, so I just got to figure out where they are and um, 
nail them down to, to install them. But um, yeah, so those should be going up soon, hopefully. Um, we, we already talked about double map, wasn't working for a bit. Um, there's also a little bit of um, wayfinding for the multi-use path that's going to be going up. Um, I know the multi-use path as a, as a bigger project across the island is still under council review whether or not we're going forward with that. Hopefully we are. Um, but we got that little section in front of Bix from the school field when BC Hydro came and dug up Main Road like two years ago, was it now? And then they repaved it. They, we, we made them give us the extra three meters. Um, so it's a very short section just in front of the field, but it's it's uh, the full three meters. And we got funding from Translink to do uh, wayfinding on it. So that was a lot of signage. We got some mascots that say inspirational things like, I don't know, keep going. <laughs> um, and then uh, somebody to do pavement art. So if you guys have been in the area, you might have seen some circles etched out into the pavement in different colors. So um, the company um, is finishing that hopefully in the next two weeks. It's only going to take them a day to finish it. It's just that we're a really small project and they have really big ones. So they're just going to sneak over on a really good weather day and fill those in. So they'll be our branding colors in random colors. Um, and then a couple mascots with speech bubbles that say things on it. Yeah, so it should be pretty fun. And uh, the rest of the plan is budget pending, uh, waiting for council approval of the work plan and then budget approvals of the items that require some budget. Um, so that also included the multi-use path phase one, as well as uh, wrapping up the Cardina improvements that, that we mentioned before, the pedestrian lighting and um, mm -hmm. tactile walking surface indicators for the visual impaired. I think that's the follow up. Should we talk a little bit about the multi-use path and the work that's being done? Right now, there is some additional engineering work being done to um, address the deficiencies in the original engineering design, which is part of the reason why it didn't uh, go forward with construction last year. Um, yeah, everybody knows kind of what happened. Yeah. So what they're doing is they're trying to do some preliminary work to figure out the geotechnical challenge that we'll have and so we could have a better budget, a better a better understanding of what our budget would be rather than we really don't know what's underneath that road, might be mattresses, might be rock um, and so let's just have an enormous budget just in case we hit mattresses um, and so they're trying to have a little bit more knowledge but it's hard to figure out what Hard. It's still hard to do, so I'm not quite sure where the engineers are in that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's a couple parts to that. Um, one is exactly what you were saying. Um, the the slope is the slope is very steep, and it's also riparian. So the original geotechnical work was very minimal. I think they just didn't want to disturb it too much, um, and so that gave us a huge variability, like unknown of exactly what the soil composition would be under the road once we start digging. But also the actual structural design of the road was found to be deficient um, to address the slope and also the seismic stability. Um, so this is just my interpretation of the information I've been told. I'm not an engineer, I'm not a road designer. Um, so there's definitely a redesign of the actual structural redesign of the, the road as well. Um, so that's going on right now, and hopefully that will help to inform the costing. So it went out for bid last year, and it was awarded. So we had two companies bid, and the prices were a lot higher than expected, if everyone remembers that. Mm -hmm. Council had actually agreed to award the tender anyways, so that was good, we were going to start construction, and then our new, our interim director of engineering um, had a full engineering review done, and that's when we found out about all these deficiencies, and it was like, let's put on the brakes until we resolve this, all these questions. Um, and one of the reasons for the high bid that we got was because we didn't know exactly what the soil composition stability would be like. 
So part of the work done right now will help to give us a better idea um, and hopefully reduce that huge contingency that was tacked on to the original bids. Um, so then once we have once we have a better sense of what the cost will be by doing this addition, this work right now, and council agreed to spend the money to do this work, um, then we'll get a new bid, we'll know how it's part, I guess a new estimate, yeah. And then it will go to council as to whether it will go forward or not. So there's still um, work steps. and decisions. One thing I'm just still a stickler on is why we're doing that section first. I think Potentially, this is just my opinion, and correct me if I'm wrong, if we start at the other end, where it's easy peasy, you know, in comparison, and we start bringing it, then at least people have an example of what we're trying to do, and, it, and a usable space that they yes. can say, all the time. Yes, the Alice's most favorite question. This is Alice's question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and it's, it's a very valid question. Yeah. Um, I, I think, so the situation we're at right now is that funding that has been approved for this phase. The reason we chose this phase in, phase in the beginning is because whenever a, a group looked at building a trail mm -hmm. or a path across the island, this section was always a sticking point. Mm -hmm. It was too expensive to build on. You have this huge rock face and you got a steep cliff and riparian and like any any road work would cost significant amount of money. Community groups just couldn't afford it. Um, and it was also a very dangerous section, like a sharp turn with no shoulder. Um, a lot of people, at least from our engagement for the transportation plan, a lot of people have pointed that out as like, well, I would never walk or cycle because it's so scary. Right. Um, so the, the idea was all this funding opened up, uh, public funding from the province, federal, and we're like, well, if we have the money. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Let's like, tackle like this little section, exactly and then you can add on. on to it. Like, or even if uh, the municipality can't get any more funding because you don't know about external funding, the community groups can come together and tack on sections because it's a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. other, uh, except other, other than this little section. And when we first looked at it, the engineering estimates we got seemed affordable. Oh, totally. No, I totally get why we originally did it, but yep. now. Now we're stuck with it because all the funding that we that's got. That's all the funding. half a million dollars in funding. Right. And that now. can't, I think I asked that before, and that can't be put anywhere else. It can't be redirected. For that. Yeah, we use it on this or we use it. Right. Fine. <laughs> okay, are you done now? Oh, that's okay. Uh, Tyler? Yep. Um, Get a message from Melanie. So the next FAC meeting with BC Ferries is Thursday, May 21st in Horseshoe Bay from 3.45 to 6.15 p.m. Um, agenda items need to be submitted by April 17th and Melanie is wondering if possibly the next BIMTAC meeting could be the FAC substitution. Um, so she will come? What's up? She will come? Yeah. Um, so you mean the, you the, the April you meeting? Like the April meeting? We don't have a BIMTAC meeting, you have a FAC meeting? Yeah. Instead of the May one, you're okay having one in May, two meetings in May? It doesn't matter to me, but that was her proposition. Her proposition. Uh, we can get back to her yeah. or go back and forth by email and I see what works. It like. doesn't matter to me. I don't know about scheduling as far as anything that has to be put through at that time or something that we have to do. Emma, is there anything at that time? Council In referrals or staff council referrals. Council referrals or whatever. Like if we missed, because that means canceling the April meeting, April 3rd or whatever meeting or the May, beginning of May meeting. So the April meeting would be the proposed canceled one. It should be fine, right? Okay. Except for this year, if everyone can remember, we need to approve the transportation work plan like in October. In October, okay. Actually, or I mean, not approve, but recommend to council. Yeah. Well, we're going to do that. That's something else other than what we're doing today. You guys don't have to remember that. Okay, no. We'll, we'll remember that. Okay. <laughs> we'll, sleep, we'll remember that. Yeah. Um, okay. And then the other um, point was to follow up with David about whether the um, assured uh, whether the assured loading for VC health staff worked out. And they, they were, Corrine was meeting with Gary and someone else. Emma? No. Today. So I'm not sure. I know Colleen was 
meeting with them. I know we're talking about that a little bit later on yeah. yeah. as well. So. And then uh, apart from that, um, it was just Bowen Queen issues the last little while. What yeah. issue? <laughs> <laughs> and the one thing that um, she's added to the FAC to-do list is to discuss the policy about overloads on the final sailing back to Bowen. Because I think it was family day Friday, family day weekend Friday, the last sailing was overloaded. Um, and did they run another one? No, what they did, um, was I on that? I think I was on it. They, uh, they uh, held the ferry for 15 minutes and let everybody go park their cars and then oh, get on. So we, nice. we had been there for two hours and then the ferry was sitting there for 15 minutes and at the moment we wondered what the you know what is going yeah. on, let's get home. Yeah. And uh, they were yeah, letting everyone, giving them 15 minutes to go park the cars outside the terminal in the parking lot and then and walk on. So I thought, they, I thought that was nice. That's sure. Really nice. Yeah. And that's it. Okay. Well then on to that, we're talking about ferry marshalling on Bowen Island annual schedule. No one's going to talk about that, and that's this on page 11, is sort of the, these are the dates that there is marshalling. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So these are the, these are the ones that it have been, like these are pre, like these are the ones that we have the marshal for sure, and it's been, it's cost sharing between BIM and BC Ferries? Yes. So Family Day was a suggestion of another one. Were there overloads leaving on Family Day? Obviously yes. on Friday was yes. overloads, but leaving on Monday? Four sailing way. On Monday. And it was backed up to the gas mm -hmm. station. Yeah, Tuesday. that was, that's right, that was that day. Yes. No, Mon Monday afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Monday afternoon. The gas station. Oh, on Family Day. So. Yeah. And it was, I think it was like a particularly nice day after a lot of crappy weather. It was yeah. funny, we were actually at the playground and like people were coming up and they're like, oh, we'll just miss the four, we'll be on the five. And I looked and it's like, the four, I'm like, you're not going to be on the five anytime soon. We're parked down by the park. So, I mean, I don't know, these dates were, were um, determined based on historical mm -hmm. data. Is there any data on this side? Yeah, yeah, yeah going there. So I, I don't think Family Day has usually been an issue. Wani mentioned to me she was open to hearing mm -hmm. these guys have to say. Oh yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah. No, okay. Not. <laughs> no, I mean, she, like, I'm just saying it's not on this list because yeah. the data previously was not. And that maybe that yeah, I don't know how what the like is that something that's taken to BC Ferry saying will you consider increasing funding so we can add on a day or is it something where we have to like bump a day and add that one in or how does it work or is it i think a lot of it had to do with it being the bow and queen like next year family day might not be a problem yeah because it's going to be the queen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 but if it was four single days yeah. that's, that's a lot so <laughs> that, that that would have been at least two. a couple yeah two yeah. on the yeah. queen or couple yeah. um, which you kind of expect on a So I don't know, next steps should we ask, should we ask it is to be included in the FAs, the FAC agenda as a just asking or? Well, I, then, I mean, step like watch, um, yeah. works with BC Ferries. Oh, so they, she can on, discuss on, on these dates so like the caution. Okay. So if there are suggestions, yeah, um, I think she's, like Seth said, she's open to hearing if there are any concerns, but certain dates or issues about the flagging or anything like that. Was there any Like Canada date? Day will be interesting this year because it's a Wednesday. Like how, you know, like how busy is that going to be on a Wednesday? Mm -hmm. People are going to have to come for like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And Father's Day. I mean, is, is it really that busy? Oh, Father's Day? I mean, this is based on the data. Just, it, mm. It just doesn't seem like compared to a family day where yeah. lots of people come for the long weekend, right. Father's Day isn't it? It's, no, it's not a holiday, it's a wedding. Yeah, yeah. that's totally weird. Same with Mother's Day. Yeah, Mother's Day and Father's Day, I don't yeah. see that as a busy ferry day, but I guess but this it's based data? on data. Mm -hmm. well, and say, then we have to decide what's more important, 
Mother's Day or Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> well, we or should family day. Family day should take precedence. We should family probably day. stick with the data if we have data. Yeah. But if if family day is repeated next year and we don't have a marshal, yeah. I think we'll all be hung. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that one, I think. Uh, can can we can so we ask how to pose that? Can the fact just ask to add a twelfth one, and if well, the BC Ferries returns and asks us to remove one, because it sounds like we have a direct line through yeah, Bonnie to just that. deal with this. Yeah. Yeah. So how how should should we just uh, just suggest for, family day? Is it, can we is it is this a We'll do an action item. An action item or just bring it. Or? Okay. Yeah, we'll do an action item. Action item. So it should be full. Okay. Anything else? Uh, family day, any other? Don't. I, I have a, a something I would like to take to fact is um, is why like our, our traffic patterns don't seem to suit historical Bowen use of the ferry. Like 20 years ago, um, we had busy periods because our commuters were coming home, uh, whereas now we seem to be driven by tourism and historically we didn't have any lodging on island, so we didn't get these swings of like, one weekend can be fine and the next one is for sailing weight because there was nowhere to stay. Like, yeah. We couldn't have that many people trying to leave on Sunday because they had to all come in on Sunday morning. Whereas now um, we must have something changing such as short-term rentals that are allowing us to have a, a fluctuating because um, there's no way you had four sailings worth of visitors to like households like, we didn't all have all day our visitors. yeah day visitors or aunts and uncles staying over in our houses like yeah. that was a huge amount of people that were trying to leave and you think too february people probably have their airbnb Cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, oh, quick getaway for the families. And I don't. I'm not proposing that we can do anything about any of that. But it would be nice as a community to know what is driving our mm -hmm. bad travel times. Like just so for our own understanding. I wonder if BC Ferries can help us understand that at all. Um, and one thing. Tell everyone where they're going when they get to the booth. Where are you going? Where are you staying? <laughs> do you live above? <laughs> well, they've said they don't want to share. Um, they don't want to share personal information, but uh, there's got to be some. Like, like statistics. Just saying, like, how many people have arrived on a Friday and a Saturday, and who is all going to go back on the Monday? Well, we do have that data, but we also have the data. We've been able to get the data uh, of people who are not who don't have cards. Yes. So, uh, assuming that that's a tourist number. Remember, we wanted that data, we couldn't get it, we couldn't get it, then we finally got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be interesting to do. We that. also got um, data on experience card traffic versus non-experience mm -hmm. card. Yeah. Okay. So um, I just wanted to bring this up because it's kind of related, but um, part of the MRTT tax application, yes. um, I ended up having to work with Tourism Bowen Island to draft a strategic business plan for what they want to do over the next five years. And I think a big part of that, um, big part of that is really that they they need to help uh, the work with short term accommodation providers and visitors to educate them and provide them with resources on island etiquette, particularly about ferry marshaling, when those peak times are, how to avoid overloads. Um, and, and really, I mean, visitors come through the visitor center more and more now because they're also making it more visible and stuff. Um, and the short-term accommodations should be coming legal soon. Uh, <laughs> as they get sanctioned, um, they should be provided with the same information um, across the island to, to help their visitors navigate the ferry system and minimize impact on residents. Um, that's the plan. Um, and we also have a community economic development officer. Is that correct, sir? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't know how much of the plan Tourism Bowen is going to be actually carrying out, but I think the municipality may have some capacity going forward to do some of that as well. I, I just bring it up because I think it does like directly address that. Oh, I think that's so important. Yeah. It's, it's, I think that's, yeah, yeah. that needs to happen big time. 
So the only data that I could think of that I wanted, that I knew probably existed, was, so right now we get uh, information from BC Ferries about how many sailings were overloaded, but we already have saturation on our return trips in the afternoon, so knowing that the 4.30 and 5.30 or those nearest ferries were overloaded is not of much use. They're overloaded on any day that's even remotely busy. But the next piece of data that might be useful to ask through the FAC is at what time did they register being overloaded? Because our sailing is unique in that we don't hold multiple sailings worth of vessel or cars within the terminal. Like once you're full, 10 cars later, they stop ticket sales and they're head, held up above and not counted. So BC Ferries doesn't know that it was overloaded by two cars or 20 cars because they're all up the hill. But if you pay attention to when it becomes overloaded, and I just set up a, yeah, I set up a nice data tracker. Too, once, if like, you know, you look on like, I'm at Park Royal one day and I'm looking like, oh, you know, like it's 60% full, but like was the boat before Exactly. Overloaded? So I set up a data tracker that would keep track of at what time the website said possible and at what time it said overloaded. And that was a way better marker of how busy the day was going to be than whether it was even it's overloaded not, before. That's really yeah. useful information. Yeah, that's but that, 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 that's from Horseshoe Bay to Bowen, right? That's yes. correct, yeah. Uh, right, but, so we don't, we don't have the data to say, like, who are all going to wake up at 8 in the morning and no. get on that no. 8.35 or 9.40? No, but, back. But, but looking for this kind of data, I don't know how we get it yet, but trying to find that to, to share with commuters and residents, like, if we can ask for it on the BC Ferry side, and then if we could find a way of figuring out similar data for, for Bowen or even establishing a trend for when it's going to be busy could be helpful for people. Um, Is that maybe something with the maybe having that notice board or whatever if we can have some sort of camera in it to show, you know, overloads? Because that would be the only way. You have to have somebody there every time going, oh, this is an overload by X amount of cars or whatever before you have any data on the Bowen side. Well, BC Ferries does keep track of how many cars they estimate it was overloaded by on the Bowen, Bowen side. Oh, okay. Um, but we don't know what time right. it filled up. Right. So the only way to get that would probably be able to mark a spot in the lineup and say at this time we <coughs> sensed a car right here. Right. Um, and just record data that way. Yeah. Um, but it's not going to get less busy. No. So, yeah, and so, like, I'm a romantic at heart. My wife would tell me otherwise. But I think that Bowen has this, like, with return trips, the idea of, like, getting overloaded for, for boat rides and things is painful. But I think there's an opportunity there. There's an opportunity to highlight certain weekends where we know or anticipate that there's going to be uh, uh, delays. So if you really need to get home early, you need to leave early, get in the lineup, and that could be part of our, our marketing program on the pamphlets, like we have the slug logo, it's like, hey, yeah, don't sit in the crosshairs. And also, if you want to be coming later, you have to go home early, you know, you need to be there. And also the idea like, you know, a four car or four ferry overload is an opportunity for kids to sell lemonade. Or something like there's, there's some business opportunities too, right? That I think that would be beneficial. That just highlights Bowen as a, a nice community that's a, a way of the move from Vancouver and the business of the of a bigger city. Although I don't know that the kids are going to get the friendliest reaction from people who have been waiting for four years. <laughs> sure, maybe beer. Like, but but be if, you, if, you, if, you, if you warn if you warn them ahead of time, yes. You know, I don't know. Anyway, so I think there's an opportunity there. That uh, the fact is, we're on an island. There's a ferry. If you all try to catch the ferry at the same time, it doesn't work. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, but I just think we need to be able to tell people with some level of accuracy that these are the days and these are the patterns that you shouldn't drive your car. Like, if you're going to come to your Airbnb, take the, like, trust me, it's going to take you four hours to get home. Take the bus. It'll be easier. Like, because when people are making that decision about do I take transit or do we, like, they're paying a lot more to bring that car over for the convenience of carrying their groceries or whatever it happens to be, their sleeping bag. Um, well, it's cheaper so, to so how, how, how are we doing yes, that with, almost. how are we effective with like the runs where it's like, 
what's it called? Where it's got uh, gasoline on the ferry, like the 4 p.m. on Wednesday. Dangerous cargo. Dangerous cargo, yeah. Dangerous cargo. Like, it's, it's publicly known. You can't get on the ferry. People adapt. People work around it. Yeah, so that's all I'm proposing that we get to, is like being able to identify what those runs are. So, so I've got an action for you then to ask fact to, to include that on the agenda of BC Ferries as a discussion. Does that make it, sense? Yeah. And then maybe if other people have other, I'm just looking at the time and we're 20 minutes behind. Right. Ah! Okay. So. <laughs> danger, danger, dangerous tourists. Yeah, yeah. So maybe do we want, if anybody has ideas, like they can direct them to to Tyler about yeah. any input and other ideas of ways to. Well, I think getting the, getting it on the far side, the time the, yeah. is terrific. That's really that'd be really useful. Yeah, it'd be super useful. Get that on, any the time. Other, yeah. Yeah. on this side, of course, it's quite a bit more difficult. And yeah. like you could do, as you said, at the overload sign or the usual overload sign, yeah. put it on the camera, yeah. and then just with a timestamp on it, so you just know, okay, it happened yeah. at such and such a time. But that's yeah. kind of a lot of work. But, but yeah, we don't want. I mean, we can. We can move yeah. on, but we don't yeah. want people to have to do the work yeah. to figure out. Like, we don't want people setting up spreadsheets and data trackers yeah. like I'm doing to figure <laughs> out when they have yeah. to leave to catch the ferry. That's yeah. extremely nerdy and yeah. beyond what we want people to be doing. Yeah. But we want to provide them the, yeah. hey, these are the kind of days where yeah. this is going to happen yeah. and have some backing to it. Yeah. So I think we can probably get the data for not that much. Like, people oppose cameras on island, but we could get that signal without a camera. Just there was a car parked here at this time. And that means it was probably overloaded. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, flashing light at Miller and Trunk Road. Right. Yeah. So I know that one we were needing to discuss which bit, crossing yeah. we were talking about. Okay, we have fusion over there. Yeah, uh, which would give us about two minutes to discuss this. <laughs> yeah. but, um, does everyone remember why it's Yep. Yeah. Up, uh, it's dark. It's yep. uh, mm -hmm. awful. It's wet. It's raining. Mm -hmm. You can't have anything across it. Yeah. Pedestrians are in severe danger. Um, so I had uh, looked into this, and it is it is doable to put in one of those. They call them RFBs, rapid flashing beacons. The ones that we have at the sled crossing. Yeah. yeah. Pedestrian operated, uh, controlled, mm -hmm. and it just looked for a little bit. Solar panel. We don't need to get expensive. Um, Municipal electrical connections. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very cost effective. We throw one on there. Um, but I was under the impression uh, when we had our previous little mm -hmm. agenda meeting, I was under the impression it was on Miller here, on the here. north side of Trunk Road. The here. That was the yeah. issue. Because there's no right street here, light this there. Here. That's yeah. supposed to be the darkest. Yeah. Not, yeah. not this. No. This. That, that's yeah. right. Okay. That was the that was for sure the conversation. That okay. was. Yeah. But okay. when you bring up the question about which one should it be, it should probably be both. I think. Or omni omnidirectional, like just have one light that it that would tr trigger both, or it just a single light. It should light be on the treated corner. like a city intersection to me. You know where you push a button and you get a walk sign. I I have a bit of a different view. Just uh -huh. I think it should be on Miller because the main issue. I mean, we talked about this yeah. at the last meeting, is when people are trying to make a left on the Miller and they're getting flashed by people coming up from Snug Cove. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then someone who's also racing for the ferry on foot is trying to cross Miller and then, oh, there's a break in the cars and you just kind of go left without even realizing someone has gone through Miller. The other side, by the pub, it's very well lit there. Yeah, yeah and, the other... And yeah. I, I mean, it could we could put it there if no, there was money, but... Okay. No, I mean, it's being opposite Miller, like, like Dorman, whatever that other side. Like, so we don't need one here. But not across Trunk Road because we don't want to make it easier for people to cross I've and interrupt an unloaded ferry. So, so that's, that, would, that was my first thought, but the, the situation where it becomes on Trunk Road is traffic heading off the ferry, up the hill, left-hand turning cars are backing up, and the person's walking in front of those cars and getting to the straight through lane and right-hand turn lane. They're blocked from... Like those left hand turning cars are stuck there, they're, they're sitting there, and the person walks and has to sort of sit there and wait for the people going straight through and turning right to notice them. Mm -hmm. And so that's the one I observe on that road. It's, it's not coming down the hill, it's you're coming from the pub, trying to 
stop the So maybe one on either yeah. side then, so not the one that crosses trunk, but one that's dormant and one Miller. Like I'd one say on either side? Miller is the first one for sure. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, dormant's pretty well laid though. Yeah, so just the same, because that's where I almost hit somebody, it's on the, because yeah. they were like in this blind spot, it was crazy. Yeah. So I didn't understand where you were saying. Charlie. So Maybe if you're driving you off the ferry, stand there. Yeah. Because <laughs> I agree with the middle one. Yeah, the middle one I agree is primarily. So if you're coming up the right-hand side lane, which can go straight up the hill, and yeah. turn right on the middle, and there are cars turning left to the liquor store or the pub. Yeah. Uh, and you have a pedestrian walking from this corner across. You can't see them mm -hmm. past the left-hand turning cars, so they don't become visible. Oh, this this lane of cars until, until, until they're until they're across. right there, um, and the the mind like the behavior of cars going up this lane on a busy afternoon is almost frantic. Yes. Yeah, they're blasting up that hill right. yeah. and annoyed that they have to get out of the, like navigate the left and right-hand turn. <laughs> so that's the one I've seen people almost get pegged at on mm -hmm. that crossing. But yeah. I would say that Miller. Is the the first the first priority, and then that one will be the, the second on that. But I don't do them both at the same time. I don't know if you can though, because the, the, these don't have lights. Because if you have the lights, the flashing lights, right? Like the flashing light on that one corner where the old gas station is, right? You wouldn't know if it was for Miller or for. Or for Bowen Trump, right? Well, at least you'd see something crashing and you'd slow down and look. If you could see it, they would actually. So, were, were they, <laughs> oh, $5,000 US a tower? A actually, I haven't looked into the cost. Um, I believe ICBC covered the entire cost of the ones that we have. So, the ones I found are about $5,000 per tower, and you can have, they can be remotely connected. So, you can have a master and a slave, or just them all be radio uh, activated so you press one and mm -hmm. and they all flash so well the ones that we have right now the yeah. sled crossing they both flash yeah, yeah so they're but if you had three yeah. corners flashing i mean i guess it would it would say somebody's doing something somewhere so stop and look yeah. kind of yeah. thing so so i mean just yeah Sorry. tell me if i'm wrong but my experience is as soon as the ferry finishes unloading that's when like i, I want to be pedestrian first as well but i also want to have quick and efficient loading and unloading of the ferry. And as soon as that happens, it feels like Snug Cove just dies and it's safe to cross the street. Like yeah. it's not an issue. Yeah, it's like rush so I, I think we don't want, like I personally don't want to make it super easy for someone to com be completely oblivious to hundreds of people trying to go up and down trunk road, hit the button, take 30 seconds to cross the road. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, there's a huge line of those cars yeah. waiting no, to get true. through Miller. Yeah. That's true. And for one person's convenience, whereas it takes like five minutes to load the ferry, just wait, wait, wait that time. Well, or between when the ferry's loading and unloading. It's or not down popular to have signs that say, take it easy with the slug, take it slow. Yeah, but Ron, he commented ferry. when he was here that, you know, when people do that, by the marina, right. where it's even more of a problem, and then people yeah. can't even get off the yeah. boat. Yeah. Yeah. People don't, they're not aware of that. No, so no, they're because they're coming from where the pedestrian can do whatever. I mean, that's real, and that is, we are, our society yeah. is the pedestrian has a right away. Yeah. Right? But they have a right away here, and then there's another crossroad up by like Seabreeze building, and then another one up. It's yeah. just too many. Yeah. Like to have and three that they could stop the boat into the traffic. Yeah. Why don't we just do, we'll do the Miller, how about we use the Miller decision now, so, and then discuss it more. Uh, next there's meeting. a recommendation here that the Transportation Advisory Committee recommend that council direct staff to have a flashing light installed to facilitate crossing at Miller Road at the, I'm gonna try my X, X yeah. Yeah. There you go, you go and we'll, we'll figure that out. Is that, is everybody ready to make that? Do you want to vote on the other one, though? Like a vote on, it sounds like there's a differing opinion on the trunk. Like, should we have a trunk. vote on whether to also do the uh, east side of trunk road? Maybe we can also, and maybe we can do some wear I just don't know, that, like, it seems a bit rushed and intense. Do you want to do it right now? No, if there's no, uh, I mean. Okay. 
Okay. Can we can we You're say right. something like whereas there is also an issue on Bowen Trunk well, Road? Further discussion may show that we want to. Why don't we just forward. say that flashing pedestrian signal? Uh, we look at installing a flashing pedestrian signal at the intersection of Miller and Trunk Road, primarily the crossing uh, on the north side. Yeah. Um, and then and then because yeah we need. Emma's got to go find pricing and yeah. figure out details, and so we're just, the we're discussion can continue. Yeah. Um, that sounds very, very good. After. I mean, I, I agree, but I think it's kind of funny that we are all intuitively making mixed signals between we're trying to encourage pedestrian traffic, <laughs> and none of us want to give pedestrians uh, <laughs> right. yeah. power over our crossing. Yeah. I think it's just a courtesy thing because we've all, it's just, Sometimes there's power in numbers, and if you're loading the ferry, then one or two pedestrians shouldn't lock down. No, yeah, true. but I'd say the concern that I would have that would, I think, trump that is that when someone does do it, right now it's dangerous. Yeah. It and somebody's going to get killed. Yeah. And, and then we're going to have to seriously do something. I mean, I hardly ever drive anywhere, and I've almost hit two pedestrians, and I drive slowly. And, and that's on the north so side? The north the trunk, yeah, trunk. coming down like towards the ferry. This one here? Yeah, so coming, yeah, absolutely. Because pedestrians, especially if they're not familiar with ball, they just walk, a, like, no, they're no. looking at their phones, and that's the problem, is that we, so, unfortunately, with all the tourism that we have here now, we have to think about it in that way. It's not yeah. for just the bone resident anymore, it's about. Everybody. Numbers of increase in numbers of people, okay. phone distraction. Mm -hmm. There's so many things, and I think we really have to protect people. Protect people on their on well. Their I foot. Sorry. Um, I think that we can just go forward with this recommendation at this point, and then Emma can do the research and look yeah. into it, and then we can well, talk no, about it further. No, we're we're recommending to council. If we're going to have Emma do more work. We oh. shouldn't be making a recommendation to council. Okay. Oh, sorry, that's the council. Okay, so should this be another action item just for Emma to look into the feasibility of it and everything? Or does she just claim the feasibility? Of can it? she not do that without council directing her? Uh, Sounds like we need to make up our mind as to what we're suggesting. Yeah, I think we should. There's I mean, nothing, I, I'm in mm -hmm. slight disagreement, but there's nothing wrong with Emma looking into doing two one on Miller mm -hmm. and then the other one on the whatever the, the ferry side of. Uh, she could look into it and make can a decision. We, can we look say into that? The, look into options for both, either, either or both options. So we're asking Emma to make the decision. Uh, well, we're, well, can she do that without the direction of council, though? I mean, isn't that the whole? It'll all be. A, it'll end up with a recommendation to council in one way or another. Yeah. Um, but the issue is, do we make a recommendation to council, or do we ask Emma to do a bunch of more work, and then we would make a recommendation to council at our next meeting? Or should we just make up our mind right now? I'm, my str I'm struggling with this a little bit, is that we don't, you want to have data, um, you know, in terms of making a decision about this or that, you want to have data. And, and I know that, I, I know intuitively that people are, there's one changing circumstance, so, is that people are crossing, going this way, they're walking right down here, and they're having to cross this, they have to. Mm -hmm. If they're going for the ferry, mm -hmm. they don't have to do this. They um, do if they're trying to catch a bus, the Eagle Cliff bus. They have to cross the street and get on that side to catch that bus coming up the hill. So that's when it's going this way. When the traffic's going this way. Yeah. It's when they're going in different, you know, no, not different directions. My worry about going having this one is that when you press that button and the flashing light starts, it lasts for what about 15 seconds or something like that. Yeah. And I can just imagine saying like suddenly the cars all stop and they sit there and they're running for 15 seconds like there'll just be cars all piled oh up yeah then somebody just... walks out of the pub and hits it again but doesn't that do go you... against what you're saying though yeah. if no one ever uses it then it's not causing a problem yeah if no one's crossing that direction yeah i think this needs further discussion oh, oh here's one other thing that's happening this parking lot like a lot of the people who are doing this are people who parked right here. Ooh, this parking lot yes. is about to disappear. Mm -hmm. So there won't be anybody doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. Or there'll be, I don't know, who, who will be going down here? Well, that's still the path, though. It's still the path. Yeah. There's a lot it's, of kids that yeah, walk down that path. That's the kids path. That's definitely the kids path. 
it's a kid powder. Yeah. I guess I'm thinking of the pitch black morning mm -hmm. yeah. when it's so unsafe. I don't, I've almost hit people on the trunk crossing, and I'm a pretty excellent careful. driver. Yeah, um, <laughs> perfect record. Well, you've got little kids. You Probably drive slower than used to, right? Yeah, I drive I, annoyingly slow. We have lots of people <laughs> tailgating me and high-beaming me. Um, but uh, so my personal experience has been that that you can hit you could hit somebody coming up drunk road. Yeah, and I guess I'm just thinking about this a little bit more, and it, it's a safety issue, and it's you know we don't want somebody to get hit and then say why didn't we do we this? Right, it. exactly. It's yeah, this is what I find funny is we're all intuitively against it. Yeah on our, the thing that obstructs our way off the ferry. But it goes against every other thing you've done. Yes, that's right. Okay, well, should we ask Emma to look into it some more and then come back to the next meeting with some more information? I, so I would like to have a price. Comfortable? I would like to have a price. When it comes to okay. council, Allison yeah. will ask me how much it will cost. And I, I won't know. Can we, can we do that? Price for one lane Emma? and price for two price, yeah. price for one, price for two. Yeah. 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 Okay, let's do that. So we won't do the recommendation. Now let's hope that somebody doesn't get hit by a car in between meetings. Oh, David, knock on some wood. How many years has it been? Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, so we're going to go to Councillor Bowman. Yeah. Um, Councillor Bowman, you had your hand up. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
um, they know the public bus is a bit more reliable. So that we also, have an obstacle. I mean, there's another what is, option. Oh. What is the program that makes it free for them? I had, I had a go kart when I was a kid. This yeah, is 25 years ago, but uh, 30 years ago. But I'm not aware. of this. Like, the fare was a dollar fifty if you had a go kart, or students was like 65 cents. Was it? I see. Okay. I, I wasn't paying for my. I could be wrong. I'm just, so, I just, yeah. I just, it's not free for my kids unless you're talking about a bowling specific. No, I just. Well, no. What I'm worried about is is are these kids paying? Like if they're paying users of the public transportation system, I'd have a hard time. Like if they're choosing to take a pay, they're going to pay for taking yeah. the blue bus versus getting on the free school bus. Yeah. I have a hard time <coughs> telling people that. No, and they can't. So the, the discussions with the bus driver, First Transit cannot yeah. deny but anybody. My second point was, is there anything Bowen going on where the kids aren't paying? The oh, kids, my so my kids have a card, like a compass card that they would just tap and it just comes out of my account. Yeah. So they're not paying, I'm paying. Well, yeah, same. So, I pay for my oldest on the bus, right. but if... But the kids aren't going to knock it on because mom's going to get mad that she's paying for a bus and she's not to pay for it because I won't even notice. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or maybe okay, having something charged. where the kids get on after... I mean, there's no way to... There's, the, the, the bus drivers, my sense is that they don't... Like, they're not interested in, in saying, okay, regular people can get on first, then if there's room, then the students can get on, and they can't do anything like that, and then, so it's, that's sort of the problem, is that the students have more ability and agility, and they can get on faster than somebody, say, with mobility issues, and aren't giving up seats, and stuff like that, so. But I think it, what you're saying, too, like, if kids are, see somebody in a wheelchair, you would hope that somebody would be like, you go first. It's not really about wheelchair, because that's, they get their own, the wheelchair has its own spot, right? But the, it's more just, just elderly, or just somebody that maybe should should be able to sit down and not stand the whole time, or something like that. So, so, so it's so the two, yeah. the two, to the ferry, or from the ferry? Well, I don't know. I from the ferry. Yeah, is it? It's, it's in the afternoon. It's in the afternoon. So these are kids who have off. missed the school? They, like, they've Either stayed they've missed after. it, or they've opting to take the public transit over the school well, the, bus. Maybe it's faster. I don't but know. But at that least how I read it. I assumed that it was they had a public bus waiting for the school bus rather waiting for them and they took the public bus because it was quicker. But the reality is tons of kids tons of the kids at Rockridge are in band and sports and yeah. they're not on the, that public bus. But exactly. Yeah, or the there or right. there there's a, yeah. tons of places where there is no school bus. Right? Yeah. So I mean there are lots of kids that probably do have to take the public transit and how do you differentiate, you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it's basically, I think this, I think Janine has the best idea where the double map thing and then just a reminder of courtesy. Yeah. And I think that's all you can really do, unfortunately. So, you know, yeah. and you'd hope that that would be enough. Yeah. Um, the bus driver can remind the kids. They can't, apparently that's not something that sounds like but they're very open to that. They, they could say, to the kids that you guys have another option whereas no one else on the yeah, bus does. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They could if they felt they comfortable could. doing that. They oh, could do that. Are we sure we understand that they have so this is coming off the afternoon high school mm -hmm. sailing that we're talking about? Mm -hmm. So specifically the three thirty, the kids are walking past the yellow bus and getting on, on the blue bus. bus. Waiting for the blue bus. The blue bus. So it's basically what my what I've heard is that it's a bunch of people waiting to get on the bus, blue bus, and and in that are students and, and other people. And then everybody's getting on the bus. And then, but then the bus is too full of people yeah, get the bus is full. Somebody like me the bus is too full because or, it's filled with kids. Yeah, or there's people that should be allowed, should be sitting and aren't sitting. And just, this is the kind of stuff that's been observed. Well, I think it starts in teaching them at elementary school how to behave on the bus. <laughs> so I think it should be part well, of your They should be, but I also would say that it's a parent thing. Like I remember when I was a kid taking the blue bus and actually was a community member. I just, to be honest, I didn't notice that an elderly woman had come onto the bus and I was sitting down and she said, why are you, this person said, why are you sitting? I remember this 30 years mm -hmm. forward. So oh, Bowen okay. community member should have the yeah. courtesy and confidence to just ask a child and say, hey, yeah. you've got another yeah. option here. Totally. So, yeah, I mean, I agree. There's some teaching and courtesy that we do, but in my mind, it's really a family thing. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I feel politeness is my job as a parent. Yeah. It's Matters. not my job as a teacher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're not really allowed to have it. 
your job as a teacher. It is a, it is a job as a <laughs> teacher as well. But, but it should start with the parent, right? Yeah. And yeah. especially when they're... I took the bus with my grandma all the time, and I was not allowed to sit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have a hard time picking on these kids if yeah. they're paying for the bus. I think there's just as many new adults. Well, and I and, and that's so. I mean, that's. But I think I, I think that's the best. Lot. That's the best route because then it allows for the learning and it allows for that and it also, you know, doesn't doesn't deprive anyone group over nothing. Yeah. I worry that Scott's going to send out a mass email to all these kids and there's going to be a parent group that's a fully legitimate reason for their kids to be on that blue bus and you're going to get a mouthful. <laughs> I, think, I think if it's just worded as, you yeah. know, if you can take yeah. a yellow bus and let yeah. someone else ride yeah. the blue bus, great. Yeah. If you can't because it doesn't go to your house, But yeah, it's the 330 blue bus that busy? I don't know. I, I mean, yeah. I'm only getting this from you, but yeah, yeah. yeah. No, this was just the concern. This was the second part of uh, the email from John Kerr, where he was talking about that. It was because it wasn't just about how many people can stand, but also about the the students displacing seats for people with mobility issues as well. So I don't, I don't just know. Being oblivious to it. Yeah, I don't know how. You know, I don't know if this is like a constant thing every single day or whatever. It's just is it a sign on the bus? Uh, I believe so. Usually, the bus is saying give up your seat for seniors yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, there's always somebody yeah. sitting in front of it. Is, <laughs> is there? The I think most of them have that. I don't think that that's actually that's pretty standard in buses. Yeah. I don't know personally, but anyways, uh, we're totally okay. Um, can we move on to medical assured loading process? Emma Chow. Emma Chow. Okay, so, so that, was we, being, that was being dealt with today. I don't know what happened. Why don't we defer that sure. until the next meeting so that we can have more information, sure. especially since Emma's not here, so that we can finally get to your conservation sure. policy and report. Is that okay with everybody? Sure. There wasn't anything that we had to do in that now, um, staff? Sorry, the medically sure is not in this group. And there was a draft letter. So there was letter. a letter from Gary yeah. to Mark Collins. Which I saw. Yeah. But we didn't need to give any input on that particularly no, it, right now, did we? I don't know if it's just that it was, it's such a laborious process for people who are already suffering. Oh, yeah. completely. So. But I also think that it was really uh, uh, intensified with the phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess it's not super urgent. Just, yeah. But, but something is, they were meeting about it today, so we don't. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Like, there's more information okay. to come. So if we talk about that, or how about we do David first, and if we feel like we're all still spry, we can talk about that after. <laughs> I just don't want to defer David's. Yeah, for sure. So. Um, you guys want to defer that then? Well, what would we say? I don't know what we can say because yeah. it was basically and it's Emma ideas, presenting it. It was just I mean I printed up the the thing that you go through and it is it's like you gotta you know there's nothing last minute about it. There's it's like you gotta have a lot of pre planning and so the problem is that because of all of that, often people are not able to get it in time. Yeah. And it's not the Bowen Island, it's not the municipality, because it's the same day, it's the pros, you have to apply to BC Ferries, BC Ferries and so the application and the and the, the letter that you get, which you then bring to here, that takes too long. And somebody needs this so they don't get overloaded coming back. This is for, well, this is, I mean, it's for both ways. So you need a tap form to come back, right, with your letter, and then um, going over, you get to park in front of the general store. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you're assured to get on. Mm -hmm. And you have to do this for each trip, or you get permission? I believe it's for each trip. So I mean, it's really kind of like, so it has to be critical emergency medical appointment, right? Traveling due to a life-threatening illness. I mean, so mm -hmm. already it's like, there's time sensitivity massive there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So the problem that is with the BC Ferry, so perhaps, because the letter, um, there is the link to the draft letter that's to BC Ferry, so maybe that can follow up with that or something, I don't know. 
I mean, that's, it's being discussed further today, so that's why I think we'll have more information next time. But if we're not having a meeting in April. Well, uh, Do you want to include it in that? Yeah, we can. Will well, the results of the meeting that happened today go to council, or are we probably no going to? Maybe Emma, maybe we can talk to, will it go to Emma? I really don't know. Um, I just know that Colleen was meeting, because she told me she was meeting, she'd been corresponding with me about this issue a bit, and said, okay, I'm meeting with Gary, and and I think it was uh, Dennis, I think, our CAO, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, it's issues around, it's a species various process, like we don't have any jurisdiction to say. Yeah, so it's our, our part mm -hmm. of it is very quick, but, and that was, I guess that was one thing that came up with the Bone Queen yeah. and all the overloads and everything that, every, all the people trying to get it yeah. done, they were coming up here pleading for hmm. the municipality to give it to them, but the municipality can't do anything without the letters from BC Ferry. So. Mm -hmm. We may put a note to talk about the fact that you're going to need some more information first. And mm -hmm. that might be for this then. information from yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll just make yeah, from yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, and the, the, the letter that uh, from Gary, the ones from Gary, just is asking them to basically yeah. streamline their acceptance um, procedure. Okay, uh, David. All right, so. So conservation development, so a bunch of us in the last election mentioned conservation development and it was in my, I talked about it. And the idea is really pretty straightforward. Um, and it's just simply that in large part, like has everybody read, I had a chance to read the thing in here? Or yeah. It? yeah, okay. Yeah, so for, for large parcels that are being developed, um, it's just that the municipality would prefer that people cluster their homes in a smaller area so that we're not spreading all over the place. And the, the idea, it, it's been used in the states, there's stuff in the University of Colorado and up in either New Hampshire or Vermont, there's a bunch of stuff on this, and stuff being developed. Um, and it's always about protecting agricultural land or protecting forested land and so on. But the angle here is it's also a transportation issue because we're a very low density, for a low density community such as ours is very hard to serve with transit. And so in any newer developments, if the houses are clustered towards where roads already exist and transit routes already exist, or even where they don't exist but they're being clustered, mm -hmm. it allows for a transit to then serve them. So it's sort of a combination of protecting the forest, protecting environmentally sensitive areas and so on, but also trying to um, reduce the amount of roads that are built, reduce other infrastructure costs, and make transportation um, more feasible, our shared transportation more feasible. So, you know, there's a whole long report you can read, blah, 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 but the issue that we're really looking for, uh, the council will be looking for, is the policy, and the policy's on you know, right at the end, mm -hmm. and it's just a handful of points. And I'll read it to you. To meet the challenges of climate change, population growth, and preservation of natural areas, for all new development applications outside of the cove, a collaborative approach between the municipality and the proponent of the development will be followed on the basis of an analysis. So rather than taking your piece of land and deciding where you want to put the houses, you first start looking at the land. Mm -hmm. Analysis of the extent and value of existing natural features, the efficacy of the means by which natural areas and natural capital will be permanently and irrevocably protected <coughs> and maintained. So okay, if you're going to protect a bunch of stuff, how are you going to do it? And incorporation of cluster development principles and then further furtherance of the municipality affordable housing policy. So we're looking for less expensive homes, um, attached homes, things like that, rather than uh, <coughs> a few giant homes. And furtherance of the municipality's transportation policy. So, so basically that's mm -hmm. the policy. If you want to add, subtract, if it's a good idea. Um, so what happened was, um, I guess I 
brought it to council. I don't remember how it actually happened. And it, it, yes, it was. In our strategic plan, I was the one who was supposed to deal with this. So I took it to the Advisory Planning Commission. A subcommittee of the advice of the APC worked on this. <coughs> and, uh, and they came up with, with this. So that's where this came from. Then it went to council as, a, as an idea. Council then passed it to all the various committees. So, comments, thoughts. Can you, so, so if we look on the map there, yeah. Are we talking about these big undeveloped parcels primarily? Yes. Oh, I can show you one smaller one that just happened. Yeah. Um, I probably shouldn't, but I guess I could. Uh, just got to find it's right here. <coughs> so this is a 10 acre chunk right here. Yeah. And um, so they were looking at some potential putting, it was actually put in, it was a pretty great little project. It's a, um, a yoga. It's right at the corner, the second zigzag corner, and there's a nice little yoga oh, yeah, uh, thing yeah, that they set up down there. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And um, and so they, what they wanted to be able to subdivide it, they could allow it to do a couple of homes, I think. Um, so what we asked them to do was cluster things together so that they were leaving a whole bunch of park space and then put some trails through it. And and then, but it's also, it's not just about you know putting a bunch of trees together. It's also thinking which trees. And so that's when it went to other committees, such as the, um, um, uh, the Greenways, Greenways and Parks, Parks and Trails, Parks and Trails Committee. You know, they wanted a trail that would connect to other ones. And some of you might have walked on uh, Mike's Lower Trail, which just a little trail, the trail that's right, right, right here, it goes along right through here. Yeah. And, and there's a potential that another trail could continue right down to here. So there's just left one little part of that uh, with a, a covenant just so that you know, there isn't an extension of that trail right now, but it could in time, and so there's a covenant to connect. So it's, it's about connecting natural spaces, connecting trails, being near roads, and all that sort of stuff. So it has been used a little bit already. Even though we don't have policy, we've talked about it. I talked about it at a council meeting, and it came up at the APC, let's use the principles of, of uh, conservation. Uh, the, one of the committees wanted to call it, not conservation development, that's sort of a confusing, Seems yeah. Like, it's like some so, yeah, it's a bit <laughs> So conservation oriented development, just slap a little word oriented in the middle and it suddenly makes a bit more sense. Yeah, I like the I like the uh, um, the idea of not imposing your idea on the land, but looking at the land and what exactly. it says to you and, exactly. and how you can work within what you have. That's right. Kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. I really like that. Do these policies normally, like I'm not familiar with all the other ones that might exist, but do they normally have any benchmarks or really good question. Um, measurable factors? The thing about a policy, these things are really tricky. I was thinking you should have, like, for some of the things that John Reed has done, you know, half of the land has been protected, 50%, um, and you know, that's pretty great. And so we're sort of when we were talking about this, thinking of slapping something such as, you know, perhaps 50%. Daniel, like a lot of other council members, thought that was... Restrictive? That was somewhat, that was somewhat ambitious, because what John got in some of the things that he did was additional de density. So he, okay, he gave 50%, but he got some extra homes yeah. um, to do that. Um, um, so that's the... I guess it's hard to it's hard to put a number. Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. know if you can if you really want to though because it would probably depend on the person. Well, really the problem that pops so in my head is like yeah. from my line of work when you're doing preliminary work that you're not ready to engage all stakeholders in. If you don't have a benchmark or an ideal that the person, the stakeholder, is putting out there, you're really wasting your time until you've gone through a whole round of work and you've started the conversation. So without them saying that ideally we would love to see 25% or like putting some metric on there, like we'd love to see preservation of natural water, so like water features, um, you know, forests, or old growth forests, without giving some yeah, metrics that this is yeah. going to be evaluated on, someone doesn't know like, okay, well I'm gonna draft up this development plan and I'm thinking I'm going to get this many units based on my density, what do I have to give up from a standard suburban plot 
that this might go through with a little tweak, or am I going to take a whole swing at this and spend ten grand on an architect or whatever you need, and then have it just be like no, um, without being close enough to even have the discussion. So I know when I'm working on anything technical, the first thing I look for is metrics, like what what on here is measurable, because that's going to be what the conversation starts around, and a policy that's like got so many people's potential wealth tied to it um, without a metric might either be hard to enforce or hard to, like developers might have a hard time getting started until they see other people go through the process and, and see what was accepted and have a benchmark set. It's a really good point, Tyler, like a really good point. And I, I think there are other things that are missing. Um, you know, like you should be looking for, what are you looking for? Not just a collection of trees, you're looking for connections. And they you know, and yeah, it's not just about your property, yeah. but how it fits yeah. in all how the surrounding fits, properties how it fits with all and everything. So it's, and I it's think like kind of not a one size fits all. It's because, not a one size fits all. Because, which, you know, benchmarks want to make it one size fits all in many but ways. Well, no, I, 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 I disagree though. No. Yeah. It's not necessarily a, a yes no policy. It's right. like these are. These could be examples of things we're I, looking for. I, I, I think what you could do, and try this idea, is you could say, have somewhere in there, and maybe it's not part of the policy, or maybe it's in material that's a company or something like that, is past practice has, has protected approximately half of the land or something like that, or yeah. between yeah, a third and half of the land. Or well, even ideal, yeah. ideals. But, and that would be your benchmark, because yeah. it would be showing that as yeah, and then if somebody comes through and they're like, okay, well, here's half the land, and here's yeah. the continuation of the trail, um, but, you know, I'm cutting down this old growth section. Mm -hmm. um, they or have some... half the land that's all rock, and it's, <laughs> you know, yeah. the, well, it's still, completely inaccessible, but it's you. It's still their land. Yeah. 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 Like, it's still... They can blast it. Yeah. I don't know, I think that, because like, like, the transportation guidelines that you've just produced for developers has some um, topics which they're going to be evaluated on. Yeah. I think that you know, a recommendation, yes. I think a recommendation you could make is, you know, you could say whether you like or dislike this, with the addition of, or something like that, some way of uh, providing metrics to give guidance to potential owners and developers yeah. as to what would be desired, something like that. So Daniel will have to figure it out. Or I might help to work with Daniel to help figure that out. Mm -hmm. But you don't need to solve it here, but that's what yeah. you'd be looking for. Something like that. Yeah, that's, that's, it's that's good. Yeah. It's a lot of work, it's good. But you know, you're heading in this direction. It's yeah. great. Did you did you want us to do a resolution like that or is yeah. it just yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we've got the metrics. Yeah. Seth has been yeah. doing this for all they're like the climate change one. It's been Except yeah, for yeah, Parks yeah. and Trails, which is two and a half pages. Really, Parks and Trails? <laughs> yes, yeah. I was cursing all day. Oh dear. I didn't yeah. wouldn't even, couldn't even get to a vote. We were over time. It's just oh, so right. many things. But it's I, I not bad things. Yeah. Were they making changes in the whole big document? See, I just realized I emailed Daniel today. Say, hey Daniel, I'm doing this tonight and then doing it again tomorrow night. And I know in the Environment uh, Committee, they were going through the whole document, you know. You no, know, there should be a period here, and, you know, all that. <laughs> and it's, just, it's Daniel. Policy, yeah. Really, it's only the policy that there'll be a recommendation to council yeah. for the policy. The rest of the report was a backgrounder yeah. for council to explain what the heck this thing's all about. Mm -hmm. So you don't need nobody yeah. needs to be fussing around with the other stuff. It's what do you want in the policy, or do you like this policy? And if not, what's wrong or what's missing, or should it be you know thrown off the side of the ship? I skipped to the policy and then yeah. went back and read some yeah. stuff later. Yeah. Well, I think it's good. Sorry. Well, you said you would focus on transportation issues in there, which I think is a yeah. high level that you're looking for. Yeah, all I did is I basically put, because I sometimes can go off on other things, but I just put a little star next to all the transportation things, because that's yeah. what we're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. But that, no, that but I think, right. I think uh, having said that, the, the um, the benchmarks and stuff like that, is that a transportation thing, or is that... You could limit it, like that, limited. as a member of a yeah. public, that would be my general comment. Yeah. If we want to tone it down to transportation, yeah. then then we could. It could all, you could have metrics on, you know, whether or not you provide extension or continuation right. of, 
of existing or proposed trail networks, yada, yada, yada. Well, maybe having that as the thing which will hopefully open a discussion about other, you know, not just transportation, but other areas. There's also the, the, active, the active transportation guidelines that we just approved uh, mm -hmm. two or three months ago. Yeah. We could slap that in here as well, or is that, that's not a policy, like is that a policy? Or? Would it be, would that be a subset of transportation policies? I don't think that would be. Maybe. Is that a transportation policy? I guess it sort of is. I think it's it really like depends. I mean, yeah. Because like there the, is building um, trails in here, but it's not yeah. attached to the, the cross island the path yet. Like, are people really going to be, like, the, the few places you pointed out, are people using that for transportation or using it for recreation? Uh, those were, rec that was recreation, the one I was talking about. That's absolutely right. Uh, yeah, so an I'm example, though, like what John Reed did in Grafton Lake. You know, it's, he's put you know, parks all around here, he's clustered people right on the main road, and he's building a bike path. How has that even gone through? Like, that's our drinking water. Uh, yeah, because but he's protect, all that is being protected, all the developments over here. I know, but all the trail, all the house lots are high, are up high when you get to the lake here on the right hand side up high, yeah. where their septic's gonna flow. Do you want to come to the Kobe water meeting next week as a member of the public? Or like where dogs, like everywhere it's for in Vancouver yeah. is fenced off and you're not allowed near or in it. Our dogs swim in it, our dogs yeah. pee in well, it. Let's not, swim in let's it. Not I know, I know. Me I don't understand how any of that went through. It went well, through the last council. And it was with two rounds of committees, including Kobe water, and yeah. diligent looking back after. Um, so getting back to the policy, should, so. should we have, I mean, as far as particularly transportation, not trails per se, and stuff that other than the cross island trail, right, or, or the multi use yeah. path or whatever, is there, so is there, are there any transportation specific? Um, well, I think additions the, I think or exclusions? There for sure are, but I don't know that, like, David said, we don't necessarily need to be the ones that come up with right. those metrics. Yeah, right. um, but just as an example, uh, when we're talking about furtherance of the municipality's transportation policies, mm -hmm. well, what does that mean? Well, maybe each new, like, certain number of houses should be serviceable by one bus stop. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Like, right. it's, you, you don't have to go very far before you can find yeah. some sort of ideal to put on it, because that's really what you're, you're saying here is that if you're gonna if you're gonna take one of those big orange chunks and you're gonna put 200 houses on it, well, we only want to have that bus making five stops for those 200 houses, not you know 50, right, right, right. Uh, which is what happens when you have sprawl and, and long driveways and, and all of that sort of stuff. Um, so I think it I think it for sure it could I think the, the recommendation would stand even if it was just uh, transportation. Yeah. Should, should we have more detail of the transportation policies? Should sort of a such as, or with a special consideration of, or any of that sort, or is that broad enough? I'm, it, it is so site specific, it's the tricky part. Yeah, and that's why I think that like having, having benchmarks is a really good idea, and I'm saying like having some of those other ones are not within our purview, but naming those ones, I said, might tweak somebody else to go, oh yeah, we should have it for other things as well. Sort of double-edged sword kind of thing, right? So, but um, do we want to um, do that? Just say by adding, you know, some benchmarks into this kind of thing or some past examples or, you know, whatever kind of thing? Yeah. Well, you <laughs> could think just... I'm losing my ability to speak. <laughs> Steph probably has something yeah. in there about metrics, I'm not sure. Oh, sorry. Just oh, look at that. Did you, I'm not sure if this is right, but that's all I'm getting from you guys. You used examples of 50% being um, benchmark, or you want to provide mm -hmm. examples? Can I, can I just add, I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to make this less clean than it is, but just your example with John Reed was great, that he's got a bike path, which is fantastic if it ties into some sort of other bike yeah. path, and I just thought, I don't know if it would make sense here, but tie into or support the development of um, in, what's that one? integrated active transportation infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Thanks, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Because really, like, it's great for John Reed to do that, and whoever might be developing next needs yeah. to tie into whatever he's done. Yeah. Not just kind of put trails for yeah. someone to walk their dog, but yeah. some sort of transport if, from a transportation thing. Yeah. Okay. Here's one thing that John talked about. It's it. There's a, you know, for the people who live over here or down here, um, a route would, you could take a bike route along the west side road, and then it can, it can connect through various properties and get to that Mike's Lord, go along there, go through here, connect through these, and get to get to the, the mm -hmm. trail that he's developing. But that that's way in the future. But it's mm -hmm. sort of it's this connecting and integrated yeah. idea. And so yeah. that if somebody in that area is thinking, okay, mm -hmm. it's time to subdivide our, my lots and turn it into something, there's something up there, oh, I could make a connection here. Yeah. And so I think that's really Mike, important. No, I think that's the idea is being required to, to get your development permit. Yes. Is you have to make connections. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If, I, if, if they're there, if there's a possibility, like in some other right. places, there won't be a possibility yeah. at all. And just a question yeah. too, like for John Reed, if, and, to, and also public, right? if it's a public trail, or what if it's integrated. But the second piece is, is he liable uh, if it's, if it's there, whoever's landed is it? Who's liable if someone has uh, an accident on a pothole that's not maintained by whoever's put that trail to be in? Yeah, that's a good question. Is well, it realistic to have an integrated transportation network on a bunch of private properties? What I'm wondering about. But um, isn't the municipality buying the land of John Reed's? He, he'll be doing it in the road allowance mm -hmm. for the, for the, the multi use path. Yeah. That, that's correct. So I, I believe our laws, I don't know, what's it called? Is it Occupiers, something. Occupiers act. liability act. Yeah, um, has changed in the last decade in that if you've got a trail that's of an obvious quality, like it's a mountain bike trail or it's a hiking trail, and somebody hurts themselves hiking on it, that's not your problem. Mm -hmm. um, and that was uh, really key, I think, in a lot of the active trails that got built in North Vancouver. Mm -hmm was the fact that this this act was was changed to uh, prevent the kind of litigious uh, behavior in the states so yeah. you tripped <laughs> on that six foot mountain bike jump right. and, uh, <laughs> I'm going to sue you for it so yeah. so I believe that that helped that problem for and I, uh, similar to that I just talked to someone in town of Cumberland yeah. who developed um, developed a whole bunch of, developed with others whole bunch of mountain bike trails on private property, old, I think it's old coal mine lands or something, you know, other, yeah, big, big companies own them. And, and so they'd be very careful of any litigation type of thing. And so they were able to work together to develop all these mountain bike trails that go through their properties. Okay. So yeah, and so I think they'll be following the same idea. Yeah, I think that's like the way North Van has dealt with it. If it's natural landscape that you can say, this is a trail, it's dirt, it's roots, it's rocks, that's pretty easy for them now, but when they build wooden structures, they have to make sure if that wooden structure exists, that it's s sturdy enough. Or well, once they pave, you have to upkeep the pavement. Yeah, it depends on the like standard that you, you bring the trail to. Yeah. So if it's a perfectly glass smooth rollerblade track and you leave a big step in the middle, well, that's probably not okay. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's uh, been developed a bit over uh, the last few years. I think um, the first point that uh, the metrics be provided to developers. What Tyler was getting at would be in terms of the proportion of the land that's being protected. Is that? Yeah, I would say that any that any metrics that you can provide Just are going to help. Examples people. of past, you know, but as it relates to transportation. Oh yeah, that's right. We have to do that. I don't. Know. I don't know. That. Otherwise, are we getting into right. to creating, um, you know, uh, yeah. guidelines for developers? That's not our thing. Here. No, we're telling David to develop guidelines. <laughs> 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 we're not. Doing that. Yeah. I think that's a separate bullet. Oh, okay. Specific citations of the transportation plan. And okay. Like, you know, but anyway, I, I'm not, I shouldn't be saying stuff. I think if you help articulate, it's okay. Yeah. Do you want that active transportation guidelines in there tonight? I think that's really good. Oh, okay. I think 
for the first one, the metrics we provided to developers regarding proportion of the land that has been protected, that could probably be more vague to avoid stepping yeah. out of transportation than yeah. just the metrics be yeah, um, right, actually. Yeah. provided to developers regarding the metrics be provided to developers regarding policy goals. Okay. You want to say specific metrics or is that a redundant? Regarding policy goals is good because then it, it just yeah. It's we're we're talking about transportation here. But actually it could you know, for all kinds of other things too. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, specific citations of the transportation plan being included, of development of the or maybe citations references to the transportation rather than such a big yeah. statement. Yeah. Sorry, what what am I hearing? Uh, specific references to be included rather than or maybe citations is the right word, but it just seemed a bit weird. That development of integrated active transportation infrastructure is supported. The active transportation guidelines being included. It does. It's uh, 9 o'clock. Yeah, I got a bow out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's 9 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. I think it's Thank you. Thank, Thank you. 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 Thank you.